Hello and greetings from Eastern Europe, my name is CallBRHD and this is the third part of best RTS games ever made. There is no difference where to begin, watch this part freely. You will find links to the other parts in the description below or at the very end of this video. Let's roll. Supreme Commander with three lengthy and diverse campaigns, a skirmish mode and online community, Supreme Commander is truly what the genre is all about. Also it has good mod support, so it extends the lifetime of this game like vodka extends your evening with friends. Vodka will save your life, just drink it, trust me. Overall, if you play Total Annihilation, the Supreme Commander will feel familiar, it has the same vibes. Because Supreme Commander is 12 years old, it may run on the worst PC you have. Actually, I think my mobile phone would be powerful enough to run it, so it's a real treat for people who can't afford high-end PC, but still want to play best games. And Supreme Commander is all that, including more than 800 very positive reviews on Steam. So what's wrong with it? Well, it is old, so it may crash freeze and so on. Most of the negative comments on Steam are exactly like that. Game crashes too often for them. For everyone else it's a wonderful game, so I guess it might be a thing of a luck. Rise of Nations Extended Edition this is a treat for any Age of Empires fan. Here you can choose from 18 different nations, each with special abilities and unique military units. You have to guide your nation through 8 stages of world's history, starting with sticks and stones and climbing your way into the future with helicopters and similar stuff. Game has some unique gameplay elements like automatic spawning of citizen workers, who automatically look for a task to perform. In my opinion, this kind of automation is really bad thing. because what's next? Automatic spawning of warriors? Automatic building construction? Automatic going to war? What else? Robots taking our jobs? Robots drinking our vodka? Hell no, say no to automatic workers. While the original game was released in the year 2003, the extended edition came to life at Steam in 2014. In addition of original game, it now has improved visuals, improved textures, achievements, cloud saves and multiplayer with ranked matches. To say short, it now has everything a modern RTS should have. Empire Earth Franchise First part is the most loved by the old school players, but let's be fair, graphics are outdated, so if you're not already a fan, please choose some other part, but not third. Because third is bad, in Metacritic.com it has user score of 3.1, yes, out of 10. You don't want to play that. You better play with a homeless cat full of parasites instead of this game. So you're left with the second part of the Empire Earth. It has much better graphics than the first one and is more fun to play play than a homeless cat full of parasites. Especially if you liked Age of Empires, Empire Earth should be your choice number one. Dungeon Keeper 2 Though the first Dungeon Keeper made a revolution in the field of strategy games, second part was the one which is still praised by thousands of fans all over the world. Released in the year 1999, this was one of the last games Bullfrog ever made, because its owner Electronic Arts closed the studio a few years later and cancelled the production of Dungeon Keeper 3 in favor of more profitable, as it seemed then, Harry Potter and Lord of the Rings games. Don't be very angry about that, because later Later they released Battle for Middle Earth, one of the best real-time strategy games ever made. Dungeon Keeper 2 was the game that strengthened the new genre of Dungeon Manager, where your creatures mind their own business and you just make their lives as comfortable as you can, because the better is your dungeon, the better creatures come through the portal and this makes you more powerful Dungeon Master. Dungeon Keeper 2 was dark and gloomy, but also it had wonderful sense of humor. And humor, you know. It it can be addictive. Nightside you probably never even heard about it, but this game deserves to be in our list because it is one of the most original RTS games in a way of how it looks. At first glimpse it looks like a lot of different blobs, globs, lumps, jumbles, gribbles, schmucks, schlubs, tangles and hunks are fighting each other. At the second glimpse you realize that you are right. Control wise it resembles Starcraft because commands are executed using right clicks and unit special abilities and upgrades are available through a command bar in the lower right. This game has no fog of war, instead your units and buildings has lighting sources to see further in the landscape and to spot enemies around them. Game 
game features four factions fighting over the resource called the Green Ice. Game is quite slow, nothing is here for a fast paced combat lovers, but just look at it. It's beautiful. Like you, my friend. Starcraft 2. Starcraft 2 is one of the best games ever made, not only in RTS world, but overall. Released in the year 2010, it's still widely playable around the world. Not only in South Korea, where, if I have heard right, Starcraft Brood War is still more popular than Starcraft 2. If any Koreans watch my videos, please tell me how it really is in the comment section. I like them both, but I'm a sucker for shiny graphics, so Starcraft 2 is my jam. I played it 8 years. Occasionally, of course, not every day, not even every month, and I'm stopped only recently because I just got bored. Let's be fair and square. Blizzard is milking the same cow, and the last new game for the PC they announced was Overwatch. You know when they announced it? Five years ago. So the company is pretty much dead with now, barely holding on with their old games. This year, Blizzard laid off about 800 employees, so things are probably not as good as they were before. But no matter, if you never played StarCraft 2, it's a game you must try. Game is still great today and, as I mentioned before, it still gets new stuff added almost every month. Well, obviously, because they have no new games, so they have to do something, right? And you can play it for free. Even if you're not into multiplayer, that is also free to play. Keep in mind that you can play entire Wings of Liberty campaign without paying a dime. It's probably more than 10 hours of fun. Also, the pro gaming scene is great. You can watch Bonjuas play the game on tournaments and cheer for them. Prizes are also big. An example, winner of BlizzCon tournament gets $200,000. For me, it's better than any sport. And as Lithuanian, I should be a huge fan of basketball, but I'm not. I'm a fan of Starcraft, believe me, you can become one too pretty easily. Just try it. Dune 2000 I have never felt so hopeless, like the moment when I saw the giant sandworm trail quickly approaching my beloved harvester. After a few seconds the monster emerged from the dunes and my resource collecting machine was gone forever in the jaws of a giant sand creature. I had no money to build another and after two hour playtime I was quickly overwhelmed by approaching enemies. This is a real memory from my childhood and not a pleasant one. Game is based on a novel written by Frank Herbert. I have read the book when I was a teenager and it made a good impression to me, but now I realize that it was because this book was written for teenagers. Main protagonist is a child who have to overcome warrior's difficulties and at the same time he founds that he has some superpowers and can control and ride giant sandworms. Now we are ready for battle. Yes, those sandworms. This would be useless ability on any planet without sandworms, but it so happened that he was on the one that had them. Yay for him! So, long story short, people made several strategy games based on Dune because story contained several factions that hated each other and it was easy to export them to the game. While Dune 2000 was meant to be a remake of Dune 2, the game that has popularized the entire genre of RTS, Dune 2000 has entirely different plot and till this day looks really good. Now it's considered abandonware. You can easily get this game for free and even find how to play it with your friends. Planetary Annihilation Titans it kinda reminds me of the book named The Little Prince, written by Antoine de Saint-Exupéry, because here you will also have your little planet, but that's the end of similarities, because this little planet of yours will be responsible for raping and pillaging other planets. Planetary Annihilation Titans is a huge standalone expansion for Planetary Annihilation game, which adds tons of new content along with the base game itself. Here you can play the game alone or dive into the multiplayer battles. Reviews are mostly positive, but better wait for a sale because it's not cheap. That's it. Third part is over, you will find links to the other parts in the description below. Also, if you like this video, please press that like button and subscribe for more great lists like that. Also, I wanna thank my newest patron on Patreon, Rafael Vieira. You and people like you encourage me to create more. Thank you.
You can also become my patron and support my videos. There is a link for that in the description below. Thank you for watching. Have a nice day. Bye. Less talking, more drinking. <laughs>